I'm just trying to do the sound in the video, but uh, oh come on, just in honour of um, a guy that's prepared to travel 14,000 miles to come and talk about a subject that he's invalued in his life, and he, he talks it and he walks it, and we've, we've had the privilege of um, being with him for the last couple of weeks. I'll tell you a quick funny story while people are getting a seat. We're walking through Glastonbury, trying to get a scone. There are no scones available in Glastonbury, but a man pulled up next to us. That man, the nice looking, attractive, tall man with a beautifully put hood goatee. And he said, you're Santos Panacci, and that's the first time he's ever happened to me. So I'm honored, as I said, because over the last few weeks, we've had some beautiful experiences with the guys. He's put himself out, he's gone on a plane, he's come all the way here to, 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 to do this. It's truly amazing that we can meet in the middle of the week, surreptitiously, and talk about astrology and syncretism. So I'm going to welcome him on the stage. He's a beautiful man. Santos Benanti, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Glastonbury, <laughs> lovely. We just, yeah, yeah. We just had a coffee in one of the shops there. I think, uh, well, shops. It was a building that was has been there since uh, 1460. Uh, Andy mentioned that it was there before Columbus set sail. So um, we had coffee there. It was great, and uh, all the beautiful uh, shops selling crystals. Fascinating. Uh, what more do you want? Uh, Joseph of Arimathea, King Arthur, Camelot, the Tor. Wow, I mean, this is it. And I was speaking to one of the sisters before we started um, earlier, and she mentioned that um, three of the presidents of the United States come from here, the uh, Adams, so John Quincy Adams, uh, Coolidge, and another one. So, um, yeah, it looks like this is a happening place, isn't it? And of course, you all know about Catherine Montwood, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she's one of the local uh, stars. And uh, so today, quite appropriately, we're going to be talking about the Glastonbury Zodiac. Uh, yeah. So um, I've uncovered a few nice little uh, pieces of information which should uh, help us to see that syncretism is alive and well, even though it's been uh, attacked and mutilated and... Uh, They've attempted to destroy it and uh, deface it from the, the face of this planet. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's still there. And this is one of the great evidences. So Catherine Maltwood, uh, she hopped in her uh, plane in the early 1920s and she had a camera with her and uh, she looked down and she saw Somerset and she saw Glastonbury and she looked around carefully and noticed that there was a zodiac on the ground. And uh, so she set about uh, publishing this. And it's very interesting because all along, it seems that the people have known that there was a zodiac here well before Catherine Maltwood. And we're gonna see some evidences of that. So without further ado, here we have, <coughs> there it is. Uh, and it's been taken from the skies as it is along the ecliptic. Those are the 12 signs of the zodiac. And uh, Somerset, would you believe, is uh, where would where would you put Somerset if you're going to put it along one of those animals? I'll give you a few hints: summer, Leo, August, which today is the last day of Leo, I suppose, the 20th of August. Perhaps tomorrow is the last day. But um, yeah, right in the paw of the lion, summer, set. So they knew what was going on. <laughs> And that's um, an interesting picture I just took off Google there. Notice this, uh, what do we call it? Well, it's a street, isn't it? Here you have High Street, don't you? But I believe um, in Aries, um, there's a town called Street. Here is Walton. Uh, so you see this here. Uh, it appears to me, I would say, since it's touching the head of Aries where right ascension of Meridian begins, I would imagine that this... Now, perhaps some of you locals can help me with this, what it is, uh, whether it's a road, but um, right on the head of Aries, and here is uh, Street, and High Street runs in between Pisces and Aries. That's uh, Aquarius up the top there, where uh, we are right now, where the Tor is in the middle of Aquarius, 
Capricorn the goat upside down. Oh, I think we should go this way, actually. Everything starts with Aries, so we'll just start from uh, right ascension of Meridian, shall we? Right here. Um, so here we have Aries. Here we have Taurus, the head of the ball. This is, Kant, uh, this is Gemini. There's two hills here. We'll see a photo of that in a minute. Here we have uh, can uh, Cancer, and of course this is Argo, the ship in Cancer, one of the, the main deacons there. Uh, we come to... So we've got Cancer. Here is Leo. Somerset's right here. Summer well, Summerton. 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 Summerton, of course. I knew Summerton. I was saying something wrong. Yeah. Summerton. <laughs> Summerton. Uh, sounds even better, doesn't it? Summer Town. So it shows that somehow these people knew what was going on, didn't they? Notice the railway going through the line here? Yeah, probably the, you know, trying to imitate the ecliptic. But these are all massive. You know, they're about, these dogs here, for instance, these are about five miles long. Right, so uh, you have to travel around a bit. I remember we went through Somerton as we came here, and it was like a 20 mile, it was still 20 miles to get to Glastonbury. So we had to travel through all these valleys here, and this is this is vast, this is very, very vast. So she had a keen eye, Catherine Maltwood, to uh, to see this, and we are very, very lucky and blessed because this will reveal some great treasures great treasures of syncretism that are just there in every country, all around the world, megaliths, monuments, all kinds of buildings that are um, mimicking as above, so below. So we see that the ancients, uh, they really treasured this wisdom, so much so that they put it in the landscape. And... Um, <clears throat> and left it there for us to, to benefit from this. There you go again, from the sphere of the heavens, along the ecliptic, and brought down to the earth. These are just s the pictures of the same thing. There you go, there's Aries starting there, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Sirius the star is here too. I'd love to see um, uh, what city is here where Sirius is in between Cancer and Canis Major. That would be interesting. Sorry? Burrow Mump. Burrow Mump. Burrow Mump. It's like Glastonbury Tall, but a bit smaller. Right. And that's the nose of Sirius. That's the nose of Sirius. There you go. So I'd love to spend a year no, here. No, 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 it's not. It's further up. Burrow Mump is much further away. Is it? Okay. It's down the mic. Oh, Sirius. It's 11 miles. Sirius, and I thought, okay, Sirius is Burrow Mump. Yeah. It's near Lancaster. Yeah. It's near Lancaster. There'll be something there, no doubt about it. There'll be something there. Uh, of course, and here's Leo, and Somerton is here. You see the Virgin upside down with a, her with a arm extended out, the handmaid of the Lord, because as she extends her grain every year, the, the, the sheaf of wheat, she's basically saying to the sun, when you come through my sign, you can, uh, you can collect some harvest. And look around, the Virgin will turn up uh, in a couple of days on the 22nd of August and uh, you see all the hay and all the wheat that they're harvesting and the fruits that's because of the Virgin, the handmaid of the Lord. <coughs> so we come to um, the scales of Libra and for that we have the dove. There's a dove here. Uh, and then we go to uh, Scorpio over here. You can see the uh, the, the scorpion upside down, we have Sagittarius, Capricorn, and of course Glastonbury Tour is right in Aquarius. So you can see that there's, there's something uh, pointing to Aquarius here. And it's very interesting that the zodiac, which is uh, also in our bodies, uh, the ancients left the wisdom for us. Aries is in the head. Taurus is the neck. Gemini Cancer is the chest, Leo is the heart, Virgo the belly, Libra the kidneys, Scorpio the generative system, Sagittarius the hips, hippo, Capricorn the knees, Aquarius the shins, and Pisces the feet. But when you look at the, the head, you will also see the 12 signs of the zodiac. And so this is why, <coughs> we'll see why it's so appropriate that, that Glastonbury Tor is in Aquarius. Aries is here. Taurus, the eyebrows and the eyes. 
the Venus eyes. Nostrils, the twins. Mouth, Cancer. Leo is the chin, so we see the, the big chin for the very proud and character type uh, people with plenty of character. When the chin is sucked in, you see that there's less proud pr pride and, and arrogance, etc., if need be. <laughs> uh, Virgo is in the neck. Why would Virgo be in the neck? Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury rules uh, communication. Yeah, communication. So the nerves, the nervous system, or the spinal cord, which goes through into the cranium through the foramen. Whoops, that's not a good start, is it? Is that, I think it's with an O. E, thank you. <laughs> so that's four is a whole, isn't it? Forum, foro in, in Latin, foro is whole of Ammon. And this is the, the four Ammon magnum, the magnum, uh, because there are many foramens in the, uh, in the body, but this is the, bi this is the big one, of course, where Virgo is. So she rules the nerves and the air, and that's what's in the neck. The two... Um, Olives and the pyramids, the back of the neck, Libra. Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn's the ears, Aquarius is the fontanelle. Did I say that right? Yes. Whew, got it. <laughs> well, why would that be? This is, this is where the sutra is, isn't it? Where, have you seen little babies, that yeah. newborns, and you can see that breathing through here? Yeah, that's the waters of Aquarius and then Pisces is here. So you see Glastonbury Tor <laughs> is in the right place. Again, and we see the two dogs, the Cerberus, I would say, that guarding the Zodiac. There's another one up here. You can see the outline of it here. It's not in this picture. They've highlighted this one, but not that one. So they're looking west. <clears throat> and there they are again. Now, I'm going to read this, and it's going to make a lot more sense when I read it toward the end. This is from Alban Boyd Kuhn. Who is this King of Glory? Wonderful book. Please, if you do get a chance to read this book, it's metaphysics at its best. And it's a, it's a big, big book. Uh, it's not easy reading, but uh, it is, it is a, a, a marvellous work in which you will understand who it is that is being spoken about. Uh, in, in the uh, scriptures such as the, the heroes like Jesus. Who really are they? And he um, addressed the fact that uh, the Egyptians and many of the cultures of antiquity did copy the skies. And the reason being, well, let's have a read of this then. The earliest names, gnomes of Egypt were... Have I got that right? Gnomes, I suppose so. Uh, of Egypt were astronomers, the dividers of the stars. Oh, I'm going to struggle with this. I wonder why it's so hard to read. Yeah. All right. Uh, not merely naming, but... Now, that's too hard. Naming of the stars into groups, divisions, and gnomes. Enough at present to affirm that the earliest chart was celestial and that its divisions and names were afterwards geographically adopted in many lands from one common Egyptian original. That was good, whatever you did, but you, you went out again. No, you're right. I, no, try a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> no, back, back the other way. That's it. Is it? All right. So we see that um, the names were geographically adopted in many lands from one common Egyptian original. From early allegorical charts of the starry heavens, and uh, no, I should read the whole thing. Let me um, persist with this. <laughs> uh, lest this critically vital pronouncement on the science of ancient astro astrography um, fall to receive its due consideration in the councils of modern studentship, it should be added for greater 
explicitness here that the divisions, localities, features, together with their names, found in all ancient religiography, were taken directly in the first instance from the early allegorical charts of the starry heavens and scattered over the maps and intimated into the histories of all ancient civilized lands. And this is exactly what they did. Hence you go to Egypt and you'll see that they made their temples in honor of constellations. Um, all temples are in honor of the, uh, the orbs of the solar system, i.e. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Moon, Venus and Mercury. Uh, what is a temple? Temple comes from tempo. Tempo is time. Time is chronos. Chronology, etc. All those time words. And that would be Saturn. Sorry for you folks out the back. So these are... He's, he's the master of time. Saturn. All born in time must perish in time. That's why Saturn's got the scythe in his hand. And he knocks on your door a day before you die or whatever. Tells you, you're out of here. <laughs> because, because it's true. <laughs> he's the first planet which is visible, the most outer planet that is visible. His daddy, Uranus, is not visible. Therefore, he is the ruler of our visible material world. And we make temples in honour of Saturn. He's the boss. And then, of course, you get some for Jupiter and Venus and the Sun and everything like that. But it's all about Saturn. This is why the Jews go to a synagogue or a temple. Temple is, the name tells you, it's Saturn. <laughs> all right, there's some more little juicy bits in here too, but I'll press on. Uh, the Gnostics asserted truly that celestial persons and scenes had been transferred to earth in the gospel and that it is only within the pleroma or the representation. I don't know what that word is, that we can identify the originals of both. Zodiac. zodiac. It is. Zodiac. It's the Zodiac. Okay, so um, that it is only within the pl Pleroma, am I saying something wrong there? No. Or the Zodiac that we can identify the originals of both. This does not need to rest on the bare assertion. Christianity's own historian, Ir Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyon, in the second century corroborates it. The Gnostics truly declared that all the supernatural transactions asserted in the Gospels were counterparts or representations of what took place above. Lovely. And I think Alvin Boyd Kuhn did a wonderful job in explaining the mythical, allegorical, uh, esoteric nature of the scriptures. Uh, so, and he was very uh, adept at explaining how one can, uh, one, when one discovers this about the Christ within, uh, we can make great trans transformations within. So, let's press forward. Here we go. These would have been uh, similar to some of the first pictures that Catherine Maltwood took. And here we see Aries. We've got two major towns. We've got Street over here and Walton. So these two appear in Aries. These two streets um, further down in the presentation. Some interesting stuff there that uh, confirms that uh, this science has been around for a long time. Here's Taurus in the countryside. There's the two hills of Gemini. Hopefully the photo will uh, will show that clearly. There's Argo, right below Dundon. Help me with the names if I'm making a mistake. Well, the Compton Dundon, those are the two hills. Yes. In the last slide. Lovely. 
let's go back to that. Yeah. And this is Compton, is it? Or no, Compton's up here. Compton, Dundon is it? And Dundon is here. Compton, Dundon is one word, one place. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. It Lovely. Dundon is, the, Dundon is the name of one of the hills. Lollover is the name of the other hill. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, Dundon, Dundon Dundon and you can see which is a Lollover. Which means two hills. That's what it means. There you go. So done is the word for hill. There you go. Yeah. Done, done, meaning hill, hill, twins. Lovely. Thank you. The ship. <clears throat> There's Somerton. Right there in the lion in summer. And there's the railway line that we mentioned before. Um, I would suggest that this is running along the ecliptic because Regulus in the heart of the line is the, one of the four stars on the ecliptic and it's a very, very prominent star. It's actually called the Messiah, the King. Regulus means King. So, uh, it, you know, that would probably be, hi be highlighted there with the uh, railway road there. Virgo, there she is upside down. The dove, the scales, Scorpio, clearly there. Can you see this at the back? Yeah? No, it's not so clear. Sagittarius, there's the archer. Capricorn, just outside of Glastonbury. There's Aquarius and the hills of Glastonbury. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Aquarius, to know where you are is... Just splendid, isn't it? There's the tall. Just beautiful. I was amazed at how high that is. <laughs> I've seen pictures of this all my life, of course. I've always wanted to visit Glastonbury. And uh, finally, here I am at the age of 50. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we, we always want to do a pilgrimage to this, this place. It's sacred, in particular with all those legends of... It's interesting how you've got streets to um, all the people from the Gospels, Mary Magdalene, there's a street there in Glastonbury. Yeah, yeah we noticed that. And there's the fish, finally. So, on one side of the street, we're <coughs> right here. Uh, we should go back to Aries. Anyway, between Aries and Pisces, as you know, <coughs> if you've done your astrology, <coughs> So best, let's just take a, a detour here and we're going to have a look at a little bit of science before we proceed, shall we? Uh, we're going to have a look at that ecliptic. So we've all seen this before. It, I don't think we need to explain too much about this. Uh, here is the equator of the Earth, of course, this line here. And this is, this is the ecliptic of the Sun. So here we see the sun is in below the equator, hence this will be winter for folks living in the northern hemisphere. Summer for people in the southern hemisphere. And of course here when, when the sun is close to or on the Tropic of Cancer, here is the Tropic of Cancer here, 23 and a half degrees above the equator. The sun meets, meets that <coughs> along the ecliptic, it will be in Cancer for 30 degrees. So what we've got here is we've got the sign of Aries is here, right here on this map. This is a couple of hundred, this will be at least 500 years old. And so Aries will always be first after the sun crosses the equinox, the equator. This is called the line of truth. It's also called in astrology the earth. Everything below this is called below the earth. So when the sun goes down to winter, it goes down to inverno in Italian. That's winter. Inverno. Hell, you just change one letter. The V into an F and you've got inferno. Infernal. Inverno, inferno. Hell, winter. Yes, hell is not hot. <laughs> it's cold. It's the winter. This is the summer. That's heaven. This is hell. That's the Garden of Eden. This is outside of the Garden of Eden in theology. Those six signs of the zodiac, Aries, along the ecliptic, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, where we are right now, we're about here, 
just about to enter in 30 degrees of the summer period. Enjoy it, because you're having a really good summer, aren't you? <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Didn't expect it to be so warm, it's beautiful. So we've got from Aries to the Virgin, uh, these are the six blessed summer months, you see. And then from the scales of justice, right here the scales begin. Interesting that they should begin at this point, isn't it? Really. Um, you know, these, this sign has been, Libra has been there for at least 5,000 years. There are certain astrologers who, um, you know, write about the fact that the Greeks added Libra. Oh, they added Libra a couple of thousand years ago. But what's Libra doing in the Dendra stone in the Louvre, which they say is at least 5,000 years old? Libra's been there forever. It's always been there. Yeah, that's not, that's not what the um, indigenous wisdom keepers say, though. Yeah, it is, absolutely. They say that whatever they say is 5,000 years old, put another zero on the end of it, it's probably 50,000 years old. Um, I'll be going down to Egypt in uh, November to speak with the, uh, at the Kemet School of Ancient Mysticism. And you might remember a beautiful documentary called The Pyramid Code by Carmen But Butler. Yeah? Check it out if you haven't. You can see it free if you need to, for lack of <laughs> filthy lucre. <laughs> uh, a lot of us are suffering with that. But um, if you can, it'd be good to uh, purchase it and support Carmen. Um, <clears throat> but in there, she extensively interviewed Abdel Hakim Awyan, who's now passed on, and his children are keeping the school going, of course. And uh, that's the sort of thing that Abdel has been teaching for many years, and they are the indigenous wisdom keepers. Uh, you know, they, <laughs> they laugh at what uh, your uh, academic types like uh, Zahi Hawass spew out to the media, paid by the Vatican to keep all of this beautiful wisdom under wraps, secret, so that we cannot benefit from it. This is the science of light. And they would prefer that we keep in darkness rather than we should know this science. This is our science. This is how everything works. And this is how planets interact, interact with their primaries. This is our Earth speaking to us. She's saying, this is what I do when I dance with the sun. As the sun goes around along the ecliptic, and he has 12 posts, see, <clears throat> when you do this with the zodiac, These are posts, or apostles. <laughs> yeah, silent T sort of, you know, tricks you a little bit there, but 12 posts. It's Jesus, the son, with his 12 posts, or his 12 disciples. So, <clears throat> so here we have Libra. Scorpio, it's not very hard to bust their game. I mean, it's, it's over. It's really, literally over. Um, yeah, one of the greatest astrotheologists of all time, the Reverend uh, Robert Taylor, who came from the, the black country here, the Midlands, not far from here. Uh, he wrote this in the 1830s, went to jail twice. They got him for teaching astrotheology. Uh, and... Um, here in the Devil's Pulpit, this is one of the two volumes. Someone gave me this, by the way. First presentation I did here in England, uh, in St. Anne's. Someone from Scotland came. This is at least 130 years old, this volume. I've never read these sermons here. I've read all the other ones in volume one. There's 24 of them. They're available on, on Amazon, on the net, and you can get the best astrotheology there. He had a lot to say, Robert Taylor, about... Um, about how they've desecrated this beautiful science. And he, and he said that science is religion, and religion is science, properly explained. They are one and the same, married at the hip. And this, this proves that this is how our earth dances with the sun. Yearly, six months she does that, six months she does this. This is also a daily cycle. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at the daily cycle.